Hey friends, welcome to the People Priority Podcast, where we dig into topics that help you show up as your best self for you and your circle of influence. I'm your host, Julie Schneers, a teacher turned speaker, team culture consultant, and leadership growth coach who loves people. Join me here every week for conversations that will motivate, educate, and hopefully just inspire you to grow through the power of communication, connection, and confidence. Because you and your people, you're worth it. Hey guys, welcome to the People Priority Podcast, a podcast where we talk about communication, connection, and confidence. What I love most about this podcast is that I get to talk to some of the most incredible and diverse people who work through those three C's in their everyday life, even though their everyday business is completely different than mine. Today's guest is very much an example of that. Jason Brown is founder and managing partner of PGP Advisory, a business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions M&A advisory firm based in San Antonio, Texas. He is an experienced business leader, a transaction professional, an entrepreneur with over 20 years of expert knowledge that he uses to help current and future business owners successfully navigate the business sale process. He works closely with clients to establish the value of their business, identify an exit strategy, and successfully close the sale transaction. Jason is passionate about doing good deals for good people, and he makes people a priority, which is why he's a perfect guest for today. He lives in San Antonio with his amazing wife, two sons, and in his free time, he loves biking, playing basketball, and all things like his running club that makes him just human. Now, what I love about Jason and what we're going to talk about today is how you lead yourself, what your leadership superpowers are, and how you can support your people because that's something that he does in his business every single day. He believes that his work boils down to facilitating positive outcomes for people. Jason, welcome to the People Priority. Julie, it is a wonderful pleasure and honor to be here with you and the audience this morning. And I am excited for this discussion as well. Yeah. Okay. So where do we start? I know that you talked with me when we visited a lot about leading yourself. And I I know that we have all kinds of leaders here with us. Give me your hacks and tricks for that. Absolutely. So big part of it for me is accountability. Uh, Julie, uh, and it's it's been part of what I've done with myself forever. Uh, I've, I've gone through a annual planning process and, and still do it to this day where we set intentions around how do we want to show up in the world at any given point in time in all the different roles and all the different hats that we ultimately wear, uh, and then set goals around what we want to accomplish in those areas. And so for me, that falls into a couple of buckets. Uh, it falls into professional. I, I'm an entrepreneur, run my own firm. I want to have an impact through that. So that's one area where it shows up. Uh, Family, try to be very intentional around how I show up as a dad, as a husband, as a a father, uh, as a brother, cousin, uh, and all the various roles that we play with people in our lives. Uh, And then in the community. So what am I doing to move the needle in the community? Uh, And then so to me, it's important to have that clarity for myself. And what's important to me before I can lean into uh, helping other people. And, and that ladders back into the life mission for me, Julie. And, and so yeah. it's all grounded in faith. Uh, and and I, I spent quite a bit of time lining up all of those goals and annual priorities around showing up as the man I want to be as a testimony of my faith. And using that as a platform to transform people's lives, because mm-hmm. ultimately it's about people. Life in all aspects and elements come down to people. I agree, I, and I love, I love that you're intentional about what your personal goals are uh, before walking into any space. And I, I talk a little bit about like what's your legacy and and leading with your legacy lens in mind. So it's very similar. Uh, what what are you? What did you decide your overarching goals and your legacy was going to be before you walked into entrepreneur life? Can I ask you that one? Absolutely. So I wrote my obituary. Uh, yeah. So yes. Awkward, uh, but yes. I wrote no, obituary. I love that. <laughs> similar, actually so similar to what I do. Yes. Yeah. But before, before stepping into uh, entrepreneurship and, and again, it was looking at what I would want others 
others to say about how I've impacted their lives. And yeah. so it's it's in line with the Covey method, right? Begin with the end in mind, understand where you're trying to get to, uh, and, and also recognizing that tomorrow is never promised. Right. So how do we show up each day living into and leaning into what that legacy is going to be? And so for me, again, transformation is huge. I used to work in corporate. Uh, and part of my challenge with corporate was it takes a lot of your time, spend a lot of time at work. And, and it wasn't easy to see how I was impacting the lives of people. Mm. Worked in several different companies, great companies, great work experiences. Uh, but as I stepped back and started looking at what impact am I really having on, on others? And am I maximizing that impact and that transformative uh, impact that I wanted to have on people? It wasn't happening. And, mm-hmm. and so and part of it is I always knew I wanted to do entrepreneurship, uh, like to be able to, to oh, you know, live in the fullness of the vision, right? And so yeah. uh, the obituary was helpful in getting clarity on how to, how to bring alignment in the various areas of life. And that's been the biggest takeaway for me as being an entrepreneurship, it, uh, being an entrepreneurship, it's that I've been able to align the priorities and overlap. I can bring my full self to all areas of my life every mm-hmm. day. Well, I I think that's so important because so many times people imagine that their influence is not in the workspace, that, Mm. you know, they, they're going to go to work, do their thing and then live their life. But the reality is we spend more time at work with those people that, that we influence and, and lead, even if you're not the boss of the company, than we do at home. Absolutely. And in many of my roles in corporate, I had some several I had direct reports. And even when I did have a direct reports, influence is so much more than having somebody listen to you because they have. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, and for you, you're working with all kinds of different businesses. So yeah. is that correct, right? The way you the way yeah, you work absolutely. with all the different kinds of businesses that you bring on and work with. Your strategy for you to walk in with your head and heart straight living the legacy that you want to be seen and known as Mm -hmm. is really impactful to every group of differing personalities because you're true to yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and it leads me to say no. And so there are instances where I run into individuals or organizations where our values don't align. And that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. I can say no. I can say this does not align with the me. direction this doesn't align with capability this doesn't align with where my spirit is leading me and yeah. so i'm not the best person to support you in this endeavor and having that freedom julie is an amazing yeah. experience to be able to show up every day and and strive it's not perfect I, I will never get on any camera and say it's all you know it's all uh sprinkles and rainbows mm. uh but to to feel empowered and confident enough to say that I'm going to lean into and lead and do business according to and in alignment with my values has been the biggest benefit of being an entrepreneur. Mm, I love that. I love that for you. I I don't always love entrepreneurship. Just full (laughs) transparency. I, I, man, it's hard, but I do love how similar to what you're saying. I do love how it has made me have to ground myself in how I want to be seen and known and ground myself in what I believe, ground myself in how I need to show up no matter who I am in that circle of influence with. So Mm -hmm. I I think it has made me stronger in that way also. Um, You know, when I was teaching, I, or, or working in the space that I worked between teaching and just speaking, I, I had my group of people. So it's easy to, it's easy to kind of show up in a way that you think, is impactful to the, that, those people and that culture and um, create create the culture that you want, sure. But it's going to be a stronger culture if you know who you are, you know what you want, uh, and and you you lead yourself well. Absolutely. What about, what about the people that don't lead themselves well? Mm. So I'm going to come back to that. And I'll just, I think it's tied in a little bit to the entrepreneurship piece. I think to be an entrepreneur, it's a requirement. Um, Mm -hmm. There's no one to tell you what to do. You are wearing many hats in the organization, particularly at the start. Uh, And so that's that's a fundamental, I think, capability that an an entrepreneur needs to have. I think those who don't lead themselves well, you see that in corporate. Uh, You see that Mm -hmm. in, in, in in many environments where 
you know, people need and want leadership. I think that actually, and we all do. So we all don't lead in every space that we're in. And so I also think understanding when to show up and when it's needed for you to lead yeah. um, and yeah. understanding when and how to be a good follower uh, yeah. is so important. Yeah. Uh, and so I, but I would also temper that by people who don't know how to lead themselves. I think sometimes there's an absence of awareness. Uh, and and that, I think, is maybe the 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 opposing piece to leading yourself is, is being unaware of, of where you are. And that's uh, probably what I get the majority of my speaking gigs. Uh, well, not speaking gigs necessarily, but workshops. Uh, I do, you know, the company is like, we know we have a problem, yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> let's, let's work on that. And, and normally it is just that perspective of what can you do to shift your own mindset so that the culture can shift together. That's right. And yeah. that means a growth mindset versus fixed mindset. And, and it's oh, something it's so crucial, huge, huge, um, being, being able to learn, being able to acknowledge where you have comings, uh, and being open to, to knowing that there's always more, uh, I think is, is critical in just showing up. And, and I think it's critical to happiness. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's realizing, to. recognizing that, that you got enough, uh, and the motivation and the hope and the drive and the desire that there's more of whatever that is for you uh, this leads to a really happy feeling uh, where I think the challenge is fixed mindset also leads to a challenge in leading yourself. So if you're if you're in the same box uh, and you don't have clarity around what what's required to get out of that box, uh, you're not stretching and growing it becomes difficult to have the impact that you want to have. We live in such a dynamic world. And, and it's changing so fast. Even put the technology aside, just the fact that we're connected with people and the number of people we interact with and engage with, uh, the amount of information that comes up uh, at us, not ha- having a good way to process through all of that. And I think we see it in, in children or some subset of children now uh, makes for a very challenging life. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that we're having this conversation and we're so aligned in it. Yeah. It's a good reminder, even if you're not an entrepreneur, how you show up every single day, being aware of how it affects others and, and being intentional in putting your best foot forward is crucial. I like what you said, maybe to happiness, but also success. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we need to do it. It's, and it's not new for, for, for me uh, in the, in the corporate environment, we do the same thing. Uh, there's, there's the little things that I do. So I coached my, my kids, uh, running club. Uh, so I used to be a runner all through high school. Uh, and, and before the knee started getting old, I uh, did quite a bit of running <laughs> as an adult. Uh, and, and part of it is, is I understand the fit of being able to have something no one can, can take from you, at least while your knees are working well, uh, being able to be out in, uh, in, in the world, going out on trails uh, here in San Antonio and just enjoying nature, mm. getting exercise and being able to process the world uh, at your own speed uh, in, in that environment has been hugely valuable to me throughout the course of my life. And being able to pour that into kids is something that's really important to me. And so spending a couple hours a week just being there. And, and what I've under, come to understand, and, and this is the connection piece, is presence is important. And those people around us who care about us uh, value presence. And even those who maybe don't know us, uh, being able to be here with you in the space this morning Um, is a blessing. Um, To be connected with you and going through this and be connected with the audience, it's a a true blessing. And so what I found is finding those opportunities to, to leverage things that I'm good at and things that I enjoy uh, and to be able to show up for other people and not expect anything in return, just to show up and be able to pour into mm. others uh, is, is really, really powerful. And I think oh, wow. those types of things lead to strong communities. Those types of things lead to positive outcomes. Um, it's just showing up as we are and pouring into others. Uh, well, that's your superpower. That's <laughs> a, that is for sure. And I, I think that is a mindset thing because not everybody thinks that way. I wish everyone did, but being able to be present Let's turn off all the noise that's in our brain and be present in this space. Put your best self and heart into whoever's in front of you and whatever it is that you should be working on uh, so that you you are your best self. That's a superpower, Jason. I appreciate that, Julie. And, and that's one of the reasons 
I went into entrepreneurship is because it's the people side of it that that I enjoy. It's not that I wasn't having an impact in corporate and doing you know great things and being able to see numbers and the outcomes and but sitting in a room with a business owner as they're looking to sell their business mm. and understanding where they are in their life journey and being able to connect with them and reassure them that they're going to be okay um, to help them understand why they're doing this. Uh, and it's most times not about just the money. It's about what this business that they've invested all their time and energy into means to them. Sure. What are they going to do next? Uh, and, and helping to just provide a safe space for people to pour into and process that experience mm -hmm. along with all the deal making stuff that has to happen. And so yeah. that's one of the things that I've enjoyed doing. Um, but I really, and, and maybe we all do it, I enjoy and really get filled up by seeing the positive impact that the work that I do has on the lives of the people and the families of the people that I support. Uh, and, and that's why I get up and do it every day. And, and it's it's maybe a dopamine high that I get <laughs> off of, um, you know, being able to have continuous experiences of, of helping people to achieve meaningful, import, important, impactful goals in their lives. So in those conversations, I, and I imagine that you have to be a good listener, you have to be uh, a, a kind communicator, you have to be a logical thinker because you've got so many wheels turning at the same time. I mean, to your point, you just talked about uh, emotional links, money, <laughs> uh, fear, right? Like you've got excitement, you've got all of these things happening at the same time which takes walking through a business deal, emotional, ethical, logical appeal. They're all sitting at the table. Yep. What has helped you put all three of those superpowers together to, to get the best out of your work? That maybe, that maybe even I can steal and use in my everyday life. Yeah, so I'll give you one thing that's been super impactful for me, just in general, uh, they they say yeah you know, part of it's life coaching right I think that's a part of the role of, mm -hmm. of an advisor uh, in the lower middle market and, and small businesses and so I was in an accountability group uh, for probably about ten years where we met every month and it was a very diverse group of of individuals different backgrounds different strengths and we had an annual retreat every year and it was a bit of a forcing function to to check in so even as life got busy. Uh, it was taking time and going back to the intentionality piece of, of pausing, processing whatever you're going through and, and having uh, individuals who you trust to be able to provide feedback to you. And so part of it for me was being able to find spaces to to not have to process everything in on, on my own uh, um, yeah. and, and to be able to bring my best self to those engagements. The other thing, though, that I learned in being in, in those spaces was there were some phenomenal, phenomenal coaches. Um, these are folks that are working in HR and companies like Google uh, that have a skill set that I was able to learn from and just being in the room with them month after month, year after year, listening to the questions that they ask, how they ask questions, listening to the prompts uh, was really, really powerful for me to learn. And as a learner, it, it was just something that I, I value and would definitely encourage anyone who has the opportunity. It, it this wasn't formal. This wasn't a. Uh, it wasn't a business. It wasn't a, a formal program. This was a group of individuals that said we all value holding uh, each other accountable and holding ourselves accountable. And let's do that and walk that journey together and see how that helps us show up as our best selves in our lives. I agree with you on that. Uh, I have a, a group that I'm into, and it, it has definitely helped me level up. Uh, yeah. Like you said, hold me accountable. But what I heard heard you say that I, I feel is most impactful, like a writer downer is time outside support and mentorship. Hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> time outside support and mentorship. And you know what? Those can be hard. It sometimes it's hard to build in time, even for those meetings of, Oh my gosh, I really need to catch up on my email. Do I go sit in this zoom meeting with my group today? Time. Yep. And there's seasons. So I mentioned that the group was there, still still going. I'm actually on, on a pause right now. Um, but over the course of 10 years, I I kind of migrated in and out of the group, say maybe once or twice, uh, maybe out for maybe a year and a half or two. 
life happens. And I think allowing ourselves the grace to recognize that life happens is important. Investing in, in spaces, places, and people that are going to transcend the seasons of life is important. And so we don't all necessarily have it in family. Uh, I do. I have a very supportive uh, family. And I try to engage and plug into uh, places and people that are going to be there. I value consistency. Uh, and that's that's really important to me. I also am flexible enough to recognize that mm. yeah, every season of life doesn't mean that every group of people are going to be there all of the time yeah. and so being flexible with that is is important and allowing ourselves uh, grace we have children we understand what that looks like and that was the first time I, I took a pause from the group was when I had uh, when my wife had our, our second son and life got really really busy and so right. at that point it wasn't it was more survival it wasn't about accountability it wasn't about growth Preach. <laughs> survival oh my yes, gosh right? yes and yeah. so the, the network shifted towards what resources support mentorship yeah. around parenting yeah. uh, I was the earlier parents in the group and so I found other spaces where I could find that uh, that support and reinforcement and mentorship but to your point it's the time it's the support and it's the mentorship that that we all need uh, in all these various phases and spaces of life uh, that that we live in okay so that that brings up something in my brain I'm thinking about leaders that I've done work with mm -hmm. that you say survival mode because you just had a kid. Check. Totally get that. Uh, I say survival mode for different reasons. And I'm thinking about leaders who, who are, are saying survival mode because of their work, because of how busy they get at work. So now we're still sitting in. When is it okay to give yourself grace because you're in survival mode of some sort? And when is it okay to, or when should you push yourself to mm. create the time to be intentional because otherwise you're always going to be in survival mode. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I do. I just got back from a, a conference in, in Miami with, uh, with small business entrepreneurs. I uh, had the opportunity to sit on a panel uh, and talk about 2024. Uh, one of the things okay. that I enjoy doing. Right, right time of the year to be, to be going through yes. this. My, my push and my prompt is set a big audacious goal. That was one of the things that I put out there is if you don't set the big audacious goal, you operate out of fear and scarcity and minimalism. And that's what survival is, right? When your resources are limited, uh, you look at hoarding and you look at how do I protect what I have? Yeah. Um, it's very much a right in front of me and it's necessary. So there are times when it is necessary and there are situations that require you to hunker down. When we had COVID, talking about growth during COVID didn't make sense, right? It's almost insensitive. Uh, and so understanding that there is a time for that. But my prompt is even in that season to be able to step back and say, what am I really trying to accomplish and at what scale? And I'll share my experience. So I'm going through it right now. Uh, I'm going through a decision-making process within my business as to do I want to continue to lead as myself and just a couple of other team members, or do I want to scale my business to something significantly larger that has greater reach? Uh, and what's the pros and cons and benefits of both? And, and where it landed me, Julie, was that going back to the transformational impact, I want this to be a platform, the business to be a platform for equity through entrepreneurship. I want this to be a wealth creation vehicle for people. And that's the lens that I look at this through. It's how many millionaires can get created by working with, with PGP advisory? How many additional kids end up going to college because their mm -hmm. parents had the entrepreneurial mechanisms to do it? So once you have that vision and you're like, okay, it's got to be big, it's got to be impactful, uh, but I'm, I am where I am, right? The reality is, you know, that the days are long. Uh, I'll okay. share that. Yeah. I don't preach. I try not to pre preach uh, self-care because it's an area for me that I have to work on. Well, same. Uh, <laughs> That's why I preach it. I'm like, I, I know the impacts. Yeah. I, I, right. It's an area that for 2024 will be likely a focus for me because for work in, in 2023. But it, it's all kind of tied back into how do I accomplish the goal? And there's just three things, maybe. Faith is one. 
because I'm not able to accomplish my goal through my own strength and power. So that much I know. And that's how I know it's, it's the appropriate goal, right? It's more than what I know I can do on my own. And so I lean back and lean into faith as one. Two goes back to the support that we talked about. And so at the conference, I met a number of individuals that are not in my current sphere of influence that will be wonderful resources yeah. to be able to plug in to, to personally and then to also be able to connect people uh, who are clients and potential clients just within my network. I am big on network. I'm big on, on how do we collectively as a community support each other to be successful. It's not about Jason Brown and what Jason Brown wants to accomplish or PGP advisory or Julie. It's about collectively where is their overlap in what we're trying to do and where can we find mutual benefit and mutual impact? And so as I'm meeting people, the thought is, how does this all ladder up and come together to create something bigger and better than anything that any one of us can do on our own? And that was what I had, I shared with several entrepreneurs is the fact that they're in the room and they're now expanding the people they have exposure to and connection to is what gets you out of survival. You don't have the answer. <laughs> so where do you yeah. go for it? I argue yeah. it's going to be faith. For 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 those of us that uh, that that grasp that or, or embrace that, and then there's also the 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 network. It's also how do we lean into and plug into it and create time and space to be in different rooms. And so, if you're struggling, if you're in a place where you don't see how to get out of it, uh, reach out for help. Plug into Julie's network and and see who's there. Reach out to others in your network. In, in whatever it's, it is, I, I met a, a woman who had uh, three kids. And so we had a conversation at the conference and I was like, I'm more than happy to be a resource for you professionally or in parenting mm-hmm. uh, and share my experience. And, and for this audience as well, I'm, I am yeah. more than happy to share of me because collectively, as we are all individually doing better, our, our collective circle yeah. is going to be better as well. Yeah. There's two really impactful things that I'm taking away from what you just shared. One is how important it is to not just have your own, yourself legacy lens or whatever you want to call it aligned, but also an idea of pillars for your company, your team, your Absolutely. next big steps, like, like knowing that there's some clarity around how do I walk through this? And for you, like you said, faith was leading the way. Okay. But you knew that you claimed that. And and then you put legs on it, right? I think that that is really, really important. But I also love that you talked about creating creating your circle of influence that's going to hold you up, remembering also that you are someone else's circle of influence holding them up. And that's what makes the world go round. These beautiful circles of influence. That's right. You fit perfectly. You're so wonderful. Okay. Uh, As as we wrap down this incredible conversation... Tell us what are three key takeaways that you hope we heard today. Absolutely. So before we can impact anyone else, we have to be able to impact ourselves. So please, 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 as you're going through each day, learn how you lead yourself, uh, because it's critical that we learn to lead self before we can lead others. And that's in all spaces and places that we uh, that we. We walk through each and every day. Uh, The second point is lean into your superpowers. So we're not all good at everything. And so figure out and understand where you're really strong. Double down, triple down, quadruple down in that area, which ties into the third. It's find support. Success requires us to work together as a collective. And so we're each leaning into our collective superpowers and leaning on each other to support for support in those areas where we're weak. It'll lead to amazing outcomes for us as individuals, for the communities that we're in, for the spaces where we lead. You're amazing. All right. Challenge us. What do you got? Absolutely. So how do we approach 2024? That's what I'm talking about. That's what we need. We need a plan. All right. I'm ready. Be intentional about your approach in 2024. And regardless of if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in corporate, if you're a parent, wherever, if you're involved in in community groups, my challenge to you is to set one on just one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but this week, step out, set one goal for 2024, one way you want to impact a group that you're involved in in 2024, and visualize, write down the impact that you want to see. It can be as simple as, I want to host an event 
where I get my favorite people together to have community because community is important to you. So just pick one thing, be intentional about it, write that down and use that as a springboard to continue to add more and add more and see where that takes you in 2024. I love that you said one, because I, I feel like it's very easy to get caught up in, okay, what are my 2024 goals? What am I going to accomplish? Write down all the things. I love that you're narrowing the focus to just pick one. Let's pick one thing. And I loved that you said, pick one big audacious goal when you were talking at your conference, because I, I, I needed that. But even if you're in survival mode and you're listening, you can pick one. You can pick one 2024 goal that you can visualize that will make an impact on who you are and how you want to impact the world around you. Jason, thank you so much. Your favorite quote, my favorite way to end. Absolutely. So (laughs) if you look at what you have in life, you will always have more. And if you look at what you don't have in life, you'll never have enough. That's from Oprah. I look at love and it. marinate. <laughs> I love that so much. The cup has got to be half full in your eyes Absolutely. for it to actually feel half full. Absolutely. Yeah. Jason, thank you so much. Really and fun. you're so awesome. The ways to find Jason will be in the show notes. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Hey, thanks for listening and being my people. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, hook me up with a five-star review. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the People Priority Podcast so you don't miss out on more tips, tricks, and important reminders. I'll see you next week.